The early years of a child's life are absolutely crucial in shaping their future development. Several factors can interlink together, giving rise to health issues among families and children at risk. In this chapter, we will look at three key issues that impact on newborns and infants. The attachment relationship, the mental health and well-being of the mother, and parenting skills. Attachment describes the bond from a child towards their parent. It develops over time in response to the way their carer meets their needs for safety, protection and comfort. Increasingly, a secure attachment is viewed as vital to healthy child development. Interventions to promote secure attachment may include teaching in groups with other recent mothers, using videos or in face-to-face -face sessions. This may, for example, promote the use of soft baby carriers, or what is known as kangaroo care, where the infant is held close to their parent's chest. In all cases, the aim is to promote sensitive, responsive care. Maternal mental health and well-being is a key influence on a child's development during their early years of life. Postnatal depression is recognised as a serious illness that can have severe negative effects for both mother and child. Mothers are more at risk from postnatal depression if they have a previous history of depression or other mental health problems, if they have poor social support, for example they have no family or friends they can turn to, and if they have a poor relationship with their partner. Treatment for women who are at risk of developing depression includes providing social support from friends, family or the community, as well as structured short-term psychological treatments. These psychological interventions may be delivered during home visits, particularly in the final term of pregnancy and in the first months after the birth. The key factor in promoting the mental health of the mother is the relationship with staff. Caregivers need to be skilled in identifying and managing mental health problems and also in building a trusting relationship with the mother. This trust encourages women at risk to open up about the problems they're encountering. By contrast, the absence of a good relationship may inhibit disclosure and this could have severe consequences for the mother's safety. Over and above the question of mental health, home visiting for deprived families during pregnancy and in the first year after birth is a proven way to improve both maternal well-being and child health. Home visiting interventions improve parents' skills and confidence and are particularly beneficial to parents who lack emotional support, especially those who are reluctant to seek support from family or friends. Targeted home visits can therefore result in a number of positive outcomes, including improvement in the home environment, improvement in family well-being, parent-child interactions and maternal sensitivity, improvement in maternal well-being and quality of life. Improvement in contraception use, improvement in the social, emotional and cognitive development of children, including preterm infants, increased infant attachment security, higher levels of mother-infant interaction, breastfeeding initiation, parenting and medical knowledge, parenting satisfaction and a sense of being supported. A reduction in the symptoms of maternal depression and anxiety, improvement in some child cognitive outcomes, improvement in positive health behaviours and the prevention of injury. Young mothers, however, can be concerned about how they might be perceived or judged as parents and may disengage from a home visiting programme. Yet teenage mothers may benefit from enhanced home visiting, such as the family nurse partnership. The best outcomes are seen in children of mothers with lower emotional intelligence and or poor mental health. The 
maximum benefits from home visits are found when a programme lasts more than six months, involves more than 12 visits, begins during pregnancy or at birth rather than later, is delivered by an appropriately trained nurse, is structured and focuses on a broad range of outcomes for both the mother and child. Needless to say, the high level of skill and sensitivities of those carrying out the home visits are absolutely vital in ensuring positive outcomes for families. There are, however, a number of barriers to these positive outcomes. The time commitment required for delivering home-based interventions is viewed as a potential barrier to parents' ongoing engagement. Fathers can take longer to engage with programmes, but once they do, evidence suggests they find them to be beneficial. Once again, the key factor in ensuring the family continues to engage with a programme is the relationship between parents and staff. Staff enthusiasm and their belief both in a programme and in working with vulnerable families are vital to the success of a programme. Other barriers to success lie not with the experience of families, but with the system. Home visiting programmes can be ineffective if they offer too little, too late. In other words, if there are not enough resources to ensure that vulnerable families are appropriately identified as being in need of support and are receiving both the quality and quantity of home visits they require. High caseloads on staff, restricted time and funding issues can all have a negative effect. In addition, there can be issues of communication between different services, with confusion arising from not knowing who's responsible for what. If services do not talk to each other, vulnerable families can slip through the net. It is therefore an absolute priority that managers in all relevant services and organisations ensure that a coordinated response is in place. Antenatal and postnatal home visiting of vulnerable children and their families, led by suitably skilled health professionals, is a proven way of improving maternal mental health, promoting secure attachment between mother and child and providing a general improvement in the home environment and family well-being. It is one of the most powerful tools in our toolkit, and so it deserves to be well managed and delivered for maximum effectiveness.